My first job in the world was a dustman, as we call them in England. Garbage collector, you call them here. Um, I did it uh, routinely in my holidays. Uh, Christmas, spring and summer as a way of earning money. Uh, it's one of the best jobs I've done, really. Smelly, but the hours were short and uh, the job was really you had to run around all the time because you got paid the same whatever time you finished so the team would make you run and uh, I actually liked the guys I worked with and found it quite exhilarating particularly if we were out in the country we would have these wonderful you know there'd be a country walk of about a mile in which you had to pick up a couple of bags put them down just to, just depended on having a bath at the end of the day really but um, I'd recommend it to anybody an older friend of mine said to me, at a point when it looked as if I was about to launch into an extraordinary meteoric career, um, he needn't have worried, actually, because that did not happen, but it looked as if it might. And he said, you know, if it all takes off, the most critical thing is don't lose your sense of the ridiculous. Don't lose your sense of fun about it. Because, you know, only idiots become divas. He said, that's, you know, people who have any kind of imagination are unlikely to become uh, the kind of diva that just thinks they're great and treats other people badly. The danger is to develop a kind of disgust with it all, and that's death. So he said, keep, keep your sense of fun about the whole thing, your sense of, uh, of, of, of adventure, and it basically it's, it's realizing the absurdity of everything. And then... It will remain an adventure, and you'll you'll realize that everything that's landing in your plate is actually um, your good fortune rather than something. Because I think it's another way of taking it too seriously when you look at this and think, oh "My God, this is all so shallow. I'm so disgusted, and all these people are fawning, and I'm, everyone around me seems so fake, and all the rest of it. Just, just, just chill out a bit. It, yeah, that's happening, but it's not a tragedy. It's silly. It's because." you landed where you landed, so um, see it for what it is and, uh, and just laugh about it. And it's easier said than done, but I have seen a lot of, certainly the more intelligent actors, I think, fall into that trap where um, a kind of a, a weird self-loathing creeps in about success. So I think that's the thing to warn people against. Career low points come on a daily basis, really, because if you're setting yourself up um, to be watched, uh, which is the job description, you know, you can uh, you can conduct yourself um, in in as modest a manner as you like, and you can try to come off as the most humble person. You, it, you can treat people as well as you like. You're still asking people to look at you. You're getting up there, and it's. Basically, uh, your bread and butter to be uh, watched and appreciated. You're the storyteller. Look at me, and uh, here's what I have to offer. And it's a very vulnerable place to be. And uh, you know, I think you can you can start to manage that as 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 you get older. If you certainly if you've got friends and family like I have who uh, keep you on the ground, um, probably more than I would like to be kept there. But I think. Um, there are, you know, there there are days that I I think where things daily get through the the, the body armor. Um, there are there is always going to be a side swipe that you hear. There'll always be a sneer. And if you're a grown up, it it, it it's okay. You deal with it. It's absolutely fine. But it it would be dishonest to say that it always glances off you. Um, and it's funny how you hear the tiniest criticism more, far more loudly than you hear the greatest greatest praise and it's just human nature but no I don't I've looked back I think I've been so ridiculously fortunate really um, I think as I was saying to Charlie I you know I don't really feel I've paid my dues I've been so lucky uh, I keep wondering what the catch is the high points right now I think people are responding to something that I've participated in, in a way which you can only dream about, really. I mean, I, I don't know how much it's going to end up making at the box office. I don't know what it's going to end up being festooned with or otherwise. But, you know, a tiny little 21-day collaborative
project which felt very, very intimate and was the result of one man's tremendous trust in me uh, and a leap of faith that we all took together on to, into what was actually a very unconventional and improbable project, suddenly being seen and talked about uh, in such appreciative terms is, um, is as good as it gets. I forage through other people's work and learn from what they do and pick up I, I study for actors that I find extremely truthful and try to imagine myself in their position, see what it is that they're doing that, is, that, that brings that out. Spencer Tracy had that quality for me. Um, many, many actors have had it. Duval, um, Kevin Bacon has it. Uh, he's one of my favorite actors. The performance in The Woodsman, I think, is one of the best performances of the last 10 years. Absolute, simple, truthful, and utterly courageous work. Well, I think the, the garbage team would probably have me back, uh, as long as I could still carry some of those bags. Uh, that's probably the, the, the second option. I think it's probably this or that.